Winter in the wild is no walk in the park. For humans, it's an excuse to binge watch Netflix and complain about the cold. But for animals, winter is the ultimate test of survival. In Peter Brown's The Wild Robot, we meet a cast of characters, from geese to bears, all trying to navigate the harsh wilderness as winter approaches. Today, we're diving deep into the real-life biology, survival skills, and quirks of these animals, and how our friendly neighborhood robot, Roz, fits into this delicate ecosystem. Let's kick things off with Brightbill, Roz's adopted gosling and future migration master. Geese are some of the most incredible migratory birds in the world, flying thousands of miles every year to escape winter's chill. But did you know the bar-headed goose, a relative of our Brightbill, holds the record for the highest altitude flight of any bird? These feathered superheroes can fly over Mount Everest at altitudes up to 30,000 feet. That's higher than most commercial airplanes. They achieve this with specialized lungs that extract more oxygen, even in the thin air of the Himalayas. In the wild, geese aren't just about flying in formation. They mate for life, meaning that when a goose finds its partner, they're in it for the long haul. Geese work as a team to raise their young, with both parents sharing the responsibilities of building nests, incubating eggs, and protecting their goslings from predators. In fact, goose families are so tight-knit that the young stay with their parents throughout their first migration, learning the ropes from mom and dad. During migration, geese use their keen sense of direction to navigate by the stars, the sun, and even the Earth's magnetic field. Nature's original GPS. In winter, geese flock together for warmth and safety. And when they do land, they seek out open water to avoid predators. Bright Bill's story in The Wild Robot shows us that while he's young, he's learning to harness his natural instincts. But when winter comes, it's time to leave the island or risk freezing solid. And let's face it, geese have zero chill when it comes to surviving winter. Next up, meet the beaver family, the best engineers in the animal kingdom. If you think humans are great at building houses, beavers take it to a whole new level. These little guys work tirelessly to build dams and lodges that not only protect them, but also shape entire ecosystems. Beavers create wetlands by damming up rivers, which in turn supports hundreds of other species like fish, frogs, and birds. They're like the ultimate wildlife architects. Beavers don't hibernate. Instead, they prepare for winter by stockpiling food underwater, branches and bark that they can snack on when the pond is frozen over. Their lodges are like cozy cabins built with sticks, mud, and even stones with an underwater entrance that keeps predators out. Inside, they can stay warm and safe, even when the world outside is freezing. What's wild about beavers is their teeth. Those big orange front teeth never stop growing. And that's actually a good thing because gnawing on trees keeps them from getting too long. They also have an extra set of lips. Inside their mouths, these lips close behind their teeth, allowing them to chew underwater without swallowing water. Yep, you heard that right. Beavers can build, swim, and eat underwater. In the wild robot, Lodge helps Roz by teaching her the importance of preparation and construction, because after all, surviving winter is all about having the right shelter. Ah, Fink, the sneaky little fox. Foxes are some of the most adaptable animals on the planet, thriving in environments from forests to urban areas. They're part of the canid family, which includes wolves and dogs, but unlike their larger cousins, foxes prefer to go solo. In the winter, foxes stay active, hunting small animals like mice, rabbits, and birds. And here's a cool fact. Red foxes, like Fink, use the Earth's magnetic field to help them hunt. When they pounce, they're more likely to succeed if they're facing north or northeast. It's like they have an internal compass guiding them. Now, let's talk about family life. Baby foxes, called kits, are born blind, deaf, and completely dependent on their mother. For the first few weeks after birth, the mother stays with the kits in the den while the father hunts to feed the whole family. But fox kits grow up fast. By eight to 10 weeks old, they're already learning to hunt, playing with their siblings and honing their stalking and pouncing skills. And by the time they're five to six months old, they're fully independent, ready to leave their parents and set off to claim their own territory. That's right. 
not even a year old, and these little survivors are out on their own. In the wild robot, Fink plays the role of troublemaker, but in the wild, foxes are resourceful and quick thinkers. They can store food underground in what's called a cache for later meals. That's right, Winter's pantry isn't just for squirrels. Foxes know how to plan ahead too. They don't hibernate, so they rely on their thick fur and cunning hunting strategies to get through the cold months. Foxes are nature's ultimate opportunists, always one step ahead of the game. Kind of like Fink when he's scheming around Roz. Tawny, the elk, is the definition of strength in numbers. Elk are social creatures, traveling in herds, and their sheer size is one of their best defenses against predators. In winter, elk herds move to lower elevations, where food is more accessible. They have this incredible ability to adapt their diet, switching from grasses and leaves to eating tree bark, twigs, and shrubs when the snow covers the ground. What's really impressive about elk is their antlers, the fastest growing bones in the animal kingdom. Male elk grow new antlers every year, shedding the old ones in late winter or early spring. These antlers can weigh up to 40 pounds. Imagine carrying that around all day. The antlers are used for fighting during the mating season, but they also serve as a symbol of dominance in the herd. Once the mating season is over, the antlers drop off and it's back to focusing on survival. Tawny in the wild robot symbolizes wisdom and leadership, guiding the herd through tough times. Elk are known for being cautious but resilient, and during winter, it's all about sticking together. Strength in numbers isn't just a saying. It's how they stay alive in a world where predators and the cold are constant threats. Now, let's talk about the real heavyweights, bears. In the wild robot, the bears are some of Roz's biggest challenges, and in the wild, they're just as formidable. But winter for bears is a different story. Hibernation. Unlike other animals that tough out the winter, bears go into a deep sleep, shutting down their metabolic processes to conserve energy. Before hibernation, they enter a period called hyperphagia, where they eat up to 90 pounds of food per day to build up fat reserves. That's like 400 hamburgers a day. Talk about bulking season. During hibernation, a bear's body temperature drops and its heart rate slows from 80 beats per minute to as low as eight beats per minute. They don't eat, drink, or even go to the bathroom during this time. Everything slows down to ensure they make it through winter with the energy stored in their fat. In the wild, bears give birth during hibernation, and by spring, the cubs are ready to emerge from the den, tiny but hungry. In the wild robot, Roz learns that even the biggest, most fearsome creatures have a softer side, and bears, despite their strength, need to rest and recharge just like everyone else. Otters are basically the party animals of winter. They make everything look fun, sliding on the ice and diving into frigid waters without a care in the world. But behind the playful antics, otters are serious survivors. Their fur is some of the densest in the animal kingdom, with up to one million hairs per square inch. This keeps them warm even when they're swimming in icy waters. Unlike other animals, otters don't have a thick layer of fat to insulate them, so their fur has to do all the work. Speaking of fun, if you're enjoying this video and want to join our wild adventure, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Just like otters sliding across the ice, make your way to that notification bell and give it a little tap so you never miss a wild fact from the next episode. And if you know someone who could use some nature knowledge, or just loves otters as much as we do, go ahead and share this video and leave a comment. Let's build a community as strong and fun as a romp. Okay, back to the otters. These playful animals use tools, like rocks, to crack open shellfish, showing off their intelligence and problem-solving skills. Otters are expert fishermen, diving under the ice to catch fish with their sharp teeth and quick reflexes. In the wild robot, they bring a sense of joy and curiosity, even in the middle of a cold winter. But while they're all about fun, their survival is no joke. They need to keep that fur dry and warm at all times, so it's a full-time job maintaining it by grooming constantly. And yes, they are every bit as adorable as they seem. Now, let's talk about the hawk, a silent, swift predator with some jaw-dropping abilities. In the wild robot, the hawk serves as a reminder that in nature, predators are always lurking, 
and winter is no exception. Hawks are incredibly skilled hunters, using their sharp talons and razor-sharp beaks to catch and tear apart prey with precision. But there's so much more to these majestic birds than meets the eye. First, let's tackle the big question. Do hawks really mate in the sky? Well, some species of hawks do. They engage in elaborate courtship rituals that involve aerial displays, where they'll swoop, dive, and sometimes lock talons mid-flight, spiraling downward together. These mid-air acrobatics are part of their bonding process. It's like a romantic dance in the sky. And yes, some species of hawks actually mate while they're soaring high above the ground. Talk about taking love to new heights. And did you know that hawks mate for life? Once they found their partner, they stick together, building large nests called aries high up in trees or cliffs. They return to the same nest year after year, adding new sticks and materials to make it even larger. Some of these nests can be five feet wide and weigh hundreds of pounds. It's like a bird's version of a forever home. But that's just the beginning. When it comes to speed, hawks are some of the fastest creatures in the sky. The red-tailed hawk, for example, can dive at speeds of up to 120 miles per hour when going after prey. That's faster than most cars on the highway. They use this incredible speed and their sharp vision, about eight times better than humans, to spot and catch their prey from high above, even in winter when food is scarce. What's truly impressive is how hawks can see in such fine detail from incredible distances. Imagine being able to read the letters on a street sign from two miles away. That's how powerful a hawk's vision is. This makes them expert hunters, able to spot a tiny mouse or a rabbit from hundreds of feet up in the air. And once they lock onto their target, it's game over. And then there's the pike. Pike are freshwater predators with an attitude problem. These guys are fast, aggressive, and have rows of sharp teeth designed to grab and hold onto anything that swims too close. They're like the barracudas of the freshwater world. In the wild, pike will eat almost anything they can fit in their mouths, from smaller fish to amphibians and even birds. In the wild robot, Brightbill's run-in with a pike is a heart-stopping moment, reminding us that the water is just as dangerous as the land. Pike have a fascinating behavior called lie-in-wait hunting. They'll hover motionless, blending into their surroundings, and then strike at lightning speed. If you've ever watched a nature documentary where a predator moves so fast you can barely see it, that's the pike in action. They thrive in colder waters, meaning winter doesn't slow them down. It just makes the food a bit more desperate. And now, let's talk about opossums. You might not think of them as winter survivors, but they've got a few tricks up their sleeves. Opossums are the only marsupials in North America. And while they don't hibernate, they do slow down during winter. They're scavengers, which means they'll eat just about anything, from fruits to insects to the leftovers of larger animals. This diet flexibility helps them survive when food is scarce. What's really cool about opossums is that they have a natural resistance to snake venom. They've evolved to be able to withstand bites from poisonous snakes, which is a superpower if you ask me. Their infamous playing dead trick is actually a defense mechanism called tonic immobility where they go limp and emit a foul odor to convince predators they're not worth the trouble. In the wild, opossums are like nature's garbage collectors, cleaning up the ecosystem by eating things that might otherwise rot or spread disease. And in the wild robot, while they don't play a huge role, you can bet they're behind the scenes, doing their part to keep the island in balance. And then we've got Chit Chat, the squirrel. Chit Chat, much like her real-world counterparts, is full of energy and always on the move. Squirrels are nature's ultimate hoarders, and while they don't hibernate, they spend most of the fall stocking up on food for the winter. They bury nuts and seeds in what's called scatter hoarding, where they stash food all over their territory. The cool part? Squirrels have an incredible memory for where they've buried their food, using landmarks to recall their hiding spots. But sometimes they forget. Those forgotten nuts can turn into new trees, helping forests grow. So in a way, squirrels are accidental reforestation experts. In the wild robot, Chit Chat is Roz's chatty little friend, always curious and always full of questions. Real life squirrels are just as inquisitive, constantly searching for food, checking out their surroundings, and sometimes even stealing from each other's caches. 
And when winter comes, they rely on their stockpiles of food and their fluffy tails to help keep warm. That tail isn't just for balance when they're running along tree branches. It's also a built-in blanket to shield them from the cold. And finally, let's talk about Roz, the robot. Roz isn't just any robot. She represents a bigger idea of how AI could work with nature rather than against it. In the book, Roz learns from the animals around her, adapting to their needs and behaviors. This is what AI should do in the real world. Help us understand, preserve and enhance the natural world without replacing it. AI has the potential to monitor ecosystems, track animal migrations, and even prevent deforestation. With the right programming, AI can be used to predict natural disasters, protect endangered species, and even assist in rewilding efforts. Imagine robots planting trees, monitoring pollution levels, or helping animals cross highways safely. The possibilities are endless, but the key is balance. AI isn't here to take over. It's a tool we can use to create a better future for both humans and the natural world. Remember, AI is a tool, one that we humans have created. Without us, there's no AI. And with the right approach, we can use it to help build a better future for both the wild world and ourselves. Winter in the wild is all about survival, adaptation, and community. Whether it's the teamwork of geese, the resilience of squirrels, or the resourcefulness of robots, there's always a way to thrive even in the harshest conditions. And now that you've learned how these amazing creatures tackle winter, don't go anywhere. More wild facts and fascinating creatures are coming your way with videos that are about to pop up on the screen. So be sure to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. And of course, drop a comment below to let us know which animal you think has the coolest superpower. We'd love to hear from you. And keep watching, because there's always more to discover in the wild world and you never know what's coming next.